Okay. And one of the things that the tutorial really does a terrible job of explaining is how to slow down. <laughs> Try not to get into the trap of thinking, oh, the tutorial wants me to do this, oh, it wants me to do that, oh, it wants me to do this, and trying to keep up with it. Because it will not stop. It will not say, let your airport run and make some money. Already, it's trying to push me into the next stage of getting larger stands. Like building up an international airport, and so on. But... At this point in your game, you may not have $2 million sitting around ready to use. You may be running quite low. Never be afraid to pause and... Well, not pause the game, but pause building and actually just let income come through. Obviously, there are some issues with my buses <laughs> and other passenger services. We might need to put in some extra bus stops here. Um, let's tackle that as an extra piece, I think. Okay, so as you can see, there is a rather long queue coming out the door of my terminal to the bus stop. There's a shorter one for this car. That's a personal vehicle, by the way, it's not a taxi. Taxis are always yellow. Um, we need to deal with this as a quick little interlude to our uh, actual airport following a tutorial line. On hold, essentially, with that right now. One bus stop, one person car, and one parking lot is clearly not handling this many passengers. We need to expand our parking services. Having a second bus stop should make a significant difference. Having some seating for our passengers will also make a difference. And putting in a taxi stop will make a difference. But we, what we do not want to do is end up with so many uh, bus stands, taxi stops, etc. in a tight space that the vehicles get in each other's way too much. So just be aware of that. You really don't want to have more than five or six things in total, uh, at least not per road segment. This is probably already too many, but we're going to expand it. Alright, while I'm waiting for those contractors, let's put some seating in. Um, that won't do. By putting in some seating for people waiting for a bus, they shouldn't queue in a long snaking trail so much. They should actually come and sit down. Right. Taxi. They should use the seats, but they're not doing it. That's intriguing. Now it's possible that the reason they're not using the seats is because the seats didn't exist before they queued up. So well, let's keep an eye on that. Also it's night time, so there's very few passengers coming out of the terminal right now. There won't be any until we get to morning. Okay, it's morning and we can see that now that the bus stop seating has actually been here for a while, people are using it. 
So putting in the extra couple of stops and putting in a lot of seating has solved our long sneaking queue of passengers. Queues and seating for our public access area isn't the only thing that we need to be paying attention to that the tutorial hasn't really explained. Now, you might notice I've added some more uh, check-in desks and that's because if you've got, let's say, four flights arriving roughly the same time, that means there's going to be four flights needing to check in at roughly the same time. In order to achieve that, you're going to have to have at least one check-in desk per flight that's boarding, or flight that's checking in, I should say. So I've got five at the moment for my uh, two, four, six, eight, I think it's eight um, stands there. That's probably still not enough. And if I were to watch the flight monitor every now and then, you'll see a red warning saying the checking desk is not available. So I'm gonna add a sixth one. And I'm also going to start building out these queues because at the moment, if you watch these passengers, they're all just sort of standing around in a weird heap and crossing over each other to get to each of the check-in desks. So you can see there's a sort of diagonal going on here. We don't want that. So select a desk, select the purple button to build the queue out and then uh, just click where you want it to go. In this case, I want it to be straight and then right click to finish editing that. If we select this one, you can click, 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 click wherever you want them to go and then undo, just hold down click, uh, control and left click again. And you'll notice that it was sort of going a few squares at a time. It wasn't going back to the previous click. And the darker green square is not part of the queue. So you'll see there the dark screen, uh, dark green square was here, but there's no queue marking there. Security checkpoints also have queues. And these, because they're uh, three squares wide, you generally want to wind them around a bit. Another thing to be aware of with security checkpoints is that you can set them to be staff only or passenger only. That's not a bad idea, particularly when you've got a much more active airport than we have right now. Often you will want your staff to be unimpeded and that includes you know, security staff, ramp agents, passenger services agents. Passenger service agents in particular have a fairly high tendency of going from non-secure to secure because they will leave a check-in desk to take up a different role at a boarding desk. So there's constant traffic back and forth through there. Of course, janitors and service technicians also transit through on a regular basis. So I'm gonna make this top one here be staff only and the bottom ones can be passenger only. In our staff room, we have quite a few people standing around not really doing anything. They'll just wander around aimlessly. We've also got various people using desks that aren't administrators or executives. We can improve on that by adding seating. Each seat has a different cost and the more expensive ones actually do impact the happiness rating of your staff or the happiness rating of your passengers once we actually start deploying those.
If you've placed a set of chairs or other objects inside a terminal that you want to repeat, you can copy and paste it. To copy and paste it, select Building Tools and the green Copy Paste mode. And you'll drag out a rectangle and you see the things that are going to get copied are blue, the things that aren't are yellow. If you hold down shift, it will also try to copy the room. At the moment, I'm just wanting to copy the chairs though, so I let go of shift, copy that, and then I can stamp this around wherever I want it. Another thing to be aware of is that passengers arriving at your terminal don't proceed immediately to check-in. Quite often they'll be standing around idle and you might see that sort of thing happening if they get out of a taxi or a bus and just stop for a while. To avoid that we need seating in our check-in area. Similarly around our boarding desks People will mill around because they've got nowhere to stand. And if you see this person here, they've got needs that haven't been met yet. In this case, energy and toiletry. Most of these have the same problem because of course we haven't actually built any bathrooms yet and we haven't got any seating for them. If we have a look at this person, you can see there are other needs as well, such as hunger and fun. Fun is mostly around decoration, such as having plants and statues around, whereas hunger is about having vending machines and food, shops, food stores that we'll get to later. There is also a need for trash disposal, although that's not actually shown here. I believe it relates to food. If they've eaten, then they need to put something into the trash can. Trash cans and vending machines can be found under the terminal options and as I mentioned, food stores, restaurants, cafes, as well as um, your duty-free type of stores. That's a later section of the tutorial we will be getting to in the future. Another quick little piece of decoration you should be aware of is the ability to lay down asphalt or concrete. If I go to airline infrastructure, there's a concrete tile or asphalt tile. Um, I don't have the concrete option yet because I haven't done the research. But if you select this, you can paint it over areas that you can't otherwise change the road texture. So this little loop here is part of the fuel depot. I can paint over it with this. If I were to be doing a service road, you'll see that the square is red. I can't actually put it there. Same with the depot here. 